This is a true account of the event happened during World War II in the municipality of Placer, a province of Surigao del Norte, Philippines, as told by my mother Jane and my uncle Marcelo Earl Patino III. My grandfather, Marcelo Elemanco Patino Jr., whom we fondly called Papaloy, was born on April 10, 1889, to Marcelo Costudio Patino and Juana de Stajo Elimanco in Placer, Surigao del Norte, Philippines. He is among eight children. He is the grandson of Capitan Luis Patino, one of the founders of Placer in 1850 during the Spanish region. During his adult life, he left town and served as Manila Police and Philippine Scout in Luzon. He came back when he met his pen pal, a beautiful lady named Maria Rama Halaman, a school teacher. The first meeting was magic and love at first sight. They were married on June 11, 1932. In later years, they were blessed with 10 children, of which two died during infancy. The invasion of the Philippines by the Japanese started on December 8, 1941, just 10 hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. The guerrilla, an underground movement against the Japanese, was established. They worked along with the American soldiers. My grandfather was among the men who joined the resistance. He was a second lieutenant guerrilla soldier. In September 1943, there were about 300 to Japanese troops landed and occupied Placer to fill drums with oil from a storage tank and in search of lumber to use in tunnel digging. One day, a group of Japanese soldiers knock at their door looking for him. My brave grandmother Mary faced them and conversed with broken Nipponko, which she learned while she was a nurse attendant in Davao City. My grandpa Eloy was hiding on a hill close to a spring nearby. The Japanese could not find him, so they went back to their barracks. On October 10, 1943, the guerrilla movement under the American leadership attacked with only 135 men trying to eliminate the Japanese in Placer. Unfortunately, the incursion failed, leaving the town in total Japanese control. In fear, people began moving out of town, including my grandparents and their family. My grandma Mary recalled that there was an American flag left in the home economics building at the school where she taught at. She went to salvage the flag. With so much respect, she folded it neatly, safeguarded, and carry it with her wherever she goes. Deep inside her heart, she believes that the flag will save their lives. They evacuated from one place to another and into the highlands of the Wata mountain ranges. They were exposed to all kinds of dangers and inconveniences. In many instances, their lives were in peril. While in the forest, a big anaconda passed through them yet they were unharmed. There was also an encounter where Papaloy was almost hit by a bullet, but it went through a carabao or water buffalo instead. God has spared my grandpa's life. On October 1944, General Douglas MacArthur came back to the Philippines to fulfill his promise when he said, I shall return. He commanded airstrikes and naval attacks against the Japanese in different parts of the Philippines, including the province of Surigao del Norte and Mindanao. During that time, my grandparents, along with some people, were in a boat during airstrikes. The commotion escalated, and the ear-splitting sounds of bombs dropped by the U.S. bombers can be heard unceasingly all over the place. Planes were hovering above them. Since their boat was unmarked, it can be perceived as a Japanese boat. Once mistaken as a target, 
they all can disperse in an instant. It was the most frightful event for those people in the boat. They were all praying that they will not be gunned down or bombed. My grandma was quick to remember of the flag which she always held close to her. With the help of my grandpa, they opened the flag nervously and wave and wave in faith and high hopes that it will protect them. All the planes and bombers passed by them until they safely arrived shore. God Almighty has answered their prayers. Airstrikes targeted Japanese camps and artilleries until defeated. In September 2, 1945, Japan surrendered. My grandma promised herself to return the American flag to the U.S. government once she retired as a school teacher. In 1975, Papa Loy and my grandma Mama Yai, accompanied by their two sons, Wade and Marcelo Earl Patino III, and a four-square missionary Dr. William West, went to the American Embassy in Manila to present the U.S. flag to Ambassador Henry Bayrodi. Her candid story was told in front of the ambassador twice. When asked by Ambassador Bayrodi what can he do in exchange for the favor, the answer was, nothing. We just wanted to return the flag to the U.S. government, the flag that saved our lives. The handover of the American flag gave so much pride and joy to my grandparents. A year after, my grandparents immigrated to America through the sponsorship of my Aunt Eva, their third daughter. They spent the remaining happy years of their lives in this great country where freedom and liberty abound. Several years later, Wade, Marcelo III, and Jane settled in America. Me and my husband immigrated in 2002. We are grateful to live in this great land. As a people, may we continue to uphold the civil liberties, justice, freedom this great nation offers. We are immensely grateful to the men, women who serve this country to protect and keep us safe. God bless America.